Warning. This project involves radioactive substances and corrosive chemicals and should not be repeated at home. It is for demonstrational purposes only. This video does not show how to refine uranium. It only shows the extraction of natural uranium from its ore. In this video I'm going to extract uranium and radium from uranium ore. Now this is just a small piece, but the people who are subscribed to my channel probably know that I went uranium mining quite a while ago and that I have several kilograms of this stuff. <laughs> so the goal for this project is to get enough uranium out to convert it into uranium metal. And I might do this in two videos, depending how long this video will be. Now, I did a bit of experimentation already. There are not a lot of videos on YouTube extracting uranium. I'm more or less following the procedure uh, provided by the YouTube channel Unpaired Electron. And he's basically dissolving the uranium in nitric acid and then precipitating it out with hydrogen peroxide. And if you're interested in this kind of stuff, you probably also know that Cody from Cody's Lab also made a video about this and he's extracting the uranium with hydrochloric acid first and then with nitric acid and then following a bunch of other steps. This might be the right procedure for uranium oxide. I think that's what he had. And what I have here is autonite which is a, a uranium mineral that readily dissolves in na just nitric acid. The downside of this is that I'm going to use a lot of nitric acid for this. Anyway, moving on. The first step is to crush this ore into a fine powder, as fine as possible. Cody from Cody's lab um, used a ball mill at the end he crushed it with some tools and then used the bommel. I'm not going to do this. A because I don't have a ball mill and B the powder will be very fine which is good for the chemistry because the surface area will be very good but it also will be a lot of dust and this is arguably the most dangerous step of this whole procedure. All right, I looked through my pile of uranium ore and it seems that this rock has the highest activity, so I'm going to use this one to do the extraction. Alright, here's the crushed up uranium ore and the next step is to dissolve the uranium with nitric acid. I have 145.1 grams of this, so it's not a huge amount, but we will see how much uranium can be extracted from this. I have 50% nitric acid and I'm just going to try to add a few drops to this and see if it's like reacting and liberating a lot of nitrogen dioxide and then if that's not the case uh, I can just pour in some more else I need to move outside and stuff. Thank you. 
All right, this seems to be well behaved. I'm going to add a little bit more with the pipette so everything is wet and there's no dust that can go into the air and then I'm going to add a lot more. Oh man, this is going to be painful to filter. In the small scale test it settled out. Uh, I'm not sure if this foam will b disappear. I might add some water later, but uh, for now I'm going to cover this with some power film and then let this sit for now. All right, it has been a week and everything settled to the bottom and the solution has a very nice yellow color and that's our urinal nitrate. There's also phosphate in solution because the autonite is a phosphate based mineral and there's all sorts of other junk in there that dissolves in nitric acid in general. I put the whole thing into this plastic bag so the radon gas cannot escape and it will instead just decay and the inside of this bag is probably now contaminated with the radon decay products. All right, now I'm going to remove the top layer that's clear and filter it with this uh, not very nice gravity filtration setup. I unfortunately don't have anything for a vacuum filtration, so I'm just going to do this here. And I'm going to add a bit more water, let this settle out and repeat until I have hopefully washed out all the uranium that's in there. All right, I have the first batch of my solution filtered and it's all clear and nice and seems to be somewhat concentrated. And the first thing that I'm going to do before extracting the uranium is extract the radium out of there. And this is done by adding a bit of barium carbonate. Barium is chemically very similar to radium and this will increase the mass a little bit because there's so little radium in there. So this will be a mixture of barium and radium and this will be precipitated out as sulfate with some sulfuric acid and then we hopefully have enough precipitate to separate it from the solution and filter it off or whatever. All right, adding just a tiny little bit of barium. Okay, some of it is not dissolving. I'm going to add a little bit of nitric acid. That's really strange. It already has a precipitate at the bottom. And it seems to be a bit more radioactive than the rest of the solution though. I'm not sure if it's uranium, the uranium being radioactive or the precipitate. Let's add some sulfuric acid and see if we can see anything in the solution. Whoa. All right, I think no precipitate is forming anymore, but it is very obvious that we precipitated out something. That's very good, let let's just settle out and uh, then see if we can extract that. All right, it's the next day and all the precipitate is now at the bottom and I'm going to remove the liquid on the top. All 
All right, now I have the uranium solution and the radium precipitate and to see if this is actually radium, I'm going to just put this on the Geiger tube. And sure enough, the Geiger counter is clicking away nicely when I put this over there. And this might be shielded by glass, but yeah, it's not very radioactive because uranium has a very long half-life, so yeah, this is not going to be very radioactive. Most of the radioactivity will come from the radium in here. All right, hello. I moved outside because I'm now going to react the urinal nitrate that's in there to urinal peroxide. And for that, I have to heat the solution to near boiling and add hydrogen peroxide. The hot plate I'm using is pretty broken. I'm using using an external temperature controller and I just found out the stir isn't working either. So uh, yeah, great. But now I'm going to wait until this is heating heated up and then I'm going to add some hydrogen peroxide. After that, I'm going to neutralize the residual acid in there and only then the urinal peroxide will precipitate. Okay, it's close to boiling, so I'm going to add the hydrogen peroxide now. All right, it's pretty full now. Also, I think it's changed color. So I'm going to add the rest of the hydrogen peroxide. I'm not really sure when the reaction stops because the hydrogen peroxide will decompose in the heat. So I don't know if I added enough and everything reacted, but it's pretty full anyway. So I'm going to add the rest and then stop. I changed my mind. I'm just going to add a little bit more. All right, I think that's enough. It seems like it's more of a green color than before. But anyway, I'm going to let this cool down and then I will adjust the pH to precipitate the uranium peroxide. All right, I let it cool down. Not entirely necessary because uh, you have to heat it up again later, but I just did that. And yeah, I noticed before that the solution is slightly green. And what is green? Uranium in the oxidation state plus four. And apparently uranium sulfate has the oxidation state plus four. And where's that coming from? Well, we added some sulfuric acid later uh, before for precipitating out the radium. And apparently this reacted. So I don't know. Let's see what happens in the next step. If we can get all the uranium out or if it stays green or whatever. So maybe it's better to first precipitate out the uranium and after that remove the radium with the method I showed. Regardless of that, the urinal peroxide is still in solution because this is still acidic 
and I'm going to add a bit of sodium carbonate to this to neutralize the acid and then the uranium should precipitate out. According to the video from Unpaired Electron, uh, if we add too much of the sodium carbonate, the pH will be too high and some phosphate will come out of solution as well. So it's supposed to be between pH 5 and 6 to have the uranium removed but nothing else precipitate out. So I'm going to test this with some pH paper. All right, we have a very nice yellow precipitate and looking at the pH. Yeah, I would say that's all right. I think from the camera, it looks more like four pH four. Yeah, maybe could be a bit less acidic, but I think that's fine. Maybe I add a bit more, but between five and six is fine. And then this stuff precipitates out. So instead of sodium carbonate from the start, I used some sodium hydroxide because there was actually a lot of acid and the foaming or, or bubbling was... Uh, not very good so i would suggest using some sodium hydroxide to get the ph right the next step is to boil this a little bit and apparently this helps the precipitate to coalesce and then it will be easier to filter so i will do that next All right, after cooking the solution, the uranium is settled out and nicely together. And next I'm going to decant off the liquid that's on top here as best as I can. And then I'm going to filter the uranium and then I have to dry it somehow. All right, let's decant off the water. Okay, going to use a paper filter for this. I tested this before and uh, this works pretty well. It looks like there's less than before. I hope it didn't like redissolve into the solution, but let's filter this and see how much this actually is. I managed to put all of it into one paper filter, but uh, yeah, the yield doesn't seem to be good. Also um, here off the side, there's more of the uranium ore solution from the beginning, and I still have to extract the, the liquid from this as well. So this is not all of it. In the ore were just a few specks of the autonite. So, but given that there's not, much there it's actually fairly radioactive so 
So most what's coming off of this is alpha radiation. But I've noticed that there's also better radiation coming off of this because I filled some of it into glass vials and it's also going through the glass. So there's something emitting better radiation. Also right at the end of this project I can introduce this thing. This is a radia code and I'm going to talk about this later a bit. But this is a really cool device measuring radiation and right now it's actually picking up a little bit but it's not that sensitive to this. This tells me that there's not a whole lot of gamma radiation coming off of this because this is only sensitive to gamma radiation but not to alpha and beta radiation. But I will get back to this when I'm finished with this project. Are you guys ready for the incredible yield of uranium? Yeah, it's not much. It's maybe a couple grams. I forgot to weigh it and it's inside the container now. But yeah, that's still a couple of bits in the in the beaker. I dried it in and obviously is there's still a bunch in the original solution from the ore so there's still a lot to be extracted but for now this is pretty okay so i said this device is not sensitive to the radiation that's coming off of the uranium but if i hold it on here Yeah, the alarm goes off eventually. It's not that intense as the radium. If I hold this on here, it's really going to climb. Yeah, it's now very high. But this device actually is able to identify the isotopes. That's This thing is actually a gamma spectrometer and we can identify both the extracted uranium from this and the radium and see how clean it is in terms of how much radiation is coming off of this. So let's look at the spectrums I got and talk a bit more about this actually pretty incredible device. All right, here's the spectrum. This is currently just a screenshot from my phone. You can also do it on a computer, but I haven't tried that yet. With uranium, you don't have a lot of peaks. The main one is at 186 kilo electron volts, and the other ones I couldn't identify yet. But the uranium seems to be pretty pure, at least in terms of radiation that's coming off of there. And with radium, there's a bunch more going on. And I need to select all these peaks manually because the app only allows you to select one at a time. But for radium, we have a 186 kilo electron volt peak as well. They're very close together, so there will be a peak at the same location. But this shows that the radium I extracted is actually radium and the uranium seems to be pretty pure as well. And it's actually pretty damn cool that you can do it with a device you can put in your pocket and with an app on your phone. Alright, I will now proceed to extract the rest of the uranium and next video I will hopefully make some uranium metal out of it. Until next time, bye!